Before we get to the Bible readings, I want to, to deal with the introduction to the sermon. Um, and I want to read to you the names of some of the more famous breaches in the world. Golden Gate. Who knows the Golden Gate Bridge? The Tower Bridge. London Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge. And nearer to home, Blokrans. Storm Sophie, Nelson Mandela Bridge, Van Stadens, Misikaba, and Ntentu. These are all famous breaches. Um, and there are many more breaches all over the world. I think that one of the most pressing needs today is for people to build breaches. We need people who can build breaches. Breaches between God and people, breaches between people, breaches between institutions and people, and so on. Sometimes we speak about burning breaches. Sometimes we speak about a breach too far. Friends, tomorrow is election time. And we, we need to go and vote. But I want us to, um, let me put it this way, thinking about election time, I thought that this is the way that I would reflect on, on what it means for me to, to vote. That when I think about the people I want to vote for, the question that comes to my mind is, who are the ones building breaches? What kind of breaches are they building? Um, if I was involved in building breaches, an engineer or a builder a, um, involved in any way, I would consider it an act of love and care. When I think back over the last year, and I think back to so many news flashes. I remember seeing uh, news, news flashes of people drowning because the breaches built. Either there was no breach or the, the breach that was built just didn't stand. Um, just couldn't stand against uh, the storm um, or the river coming down too strong. I also remember people being rescued because of adequate breach facilities. And so that's what I had in mind, thinking about tomorrow and thinking about our message for today. And with that in mind, we can now turn to our Bible readings. And the first one is taken from the Old Testament, and we're going to read from the book of Ruth. And we're going to read from Ruth chapter 1. And it's entitled here, Naomi Loses Her Husband and sons. We're reading from Ruth chapter 1. It's a story of loyalty, but more than that, it is a story of God achieving God's purposes through the lives of ordinary people. And I think that's what's important. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Mahlon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, 
and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Thanks be to God for God's word. And then we turn to our gospel reading, the gospel of Mark. And we will read from chapter 12, from verse 28, the greatest commandment. Mark chapter 12, from verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear or listen, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Just so far in God's word, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. Amen. And so, friends, as I've said earlier on, we are today talking about building breaches and in our minds we are thinking about tomorrow which of course is election day 
building breaches. Now, in ancient, um, before I get there, let me uh, just for a moment go back to Ruth and Naomi. And what we are saying is that God achieves God's purposes through ordinary people like us building breaches. And so the question is, how can we help one another to build breaches between people, between God and people, between people and institutions, um, between races, between genders, uh, many different ways. The world is in need of people who can build breaches. Now I want to say three things about it, uh, about how, as ordinary people, we can build breaches. First, in ancient Israel, at the time of Jesus, the time in which Jesus lived, and before and even after that, bringing one's sacrifices to the temple was one way to build breaches between God and people. One way of building a breach between God and people. But then we, we have to listen to what Jesus has to say about that. About that way of building breaches. And and this is what Jesus has to say in that passage in Mark's Gospel. The first thing Jesus has to say is this, that the first thing about that commandment that Jesus speaks about, the, the person points out as the, the biggest commandment, the greatest, the most important is this, is listen. Listen, O Israel. Hear O Israel, without listening, the whole thing falls flat. Listening. Without a listening people, God will not achieve God's purposes. Without a people listening, God cannot achieve God's purposes. Perhaps the best way to do this for us as ordinary people is to create listening communities. Communities in which we are able to really listen to one another. I think that perhaps we need to start with creating families as listening communities. If we can't even listen to one another as family, how can we, we listen to one another outside of that? And if we can't listen to one another, how can we listen to God? Because here is the thing, God speaks to us through people. When we listen to one another, as we listen to one another, we hear God speaking to us. God speaks to us through one another, through people. If we struggle to really hear one another, we will struggle to hear what God is saying to us. When I listen to the news, a lot of this stuff happens because somehow we find it difficult to really listen to one another. To listen 
may mean to suspend our objections to one another. It may mean to suspend, even for a little while, even if just for a little while, our assumptions about each other. To really become listening communities. And then from that, from there on, not only must we listen to one another, and that's something we can do as ordinary people, not only must we listen to one another, but we must also speak to one another. And what we must say to each other is this, that God is one. There is one God, and God is one. So often, we choose to live in a world in which there are many gods, or in a world with many gods. There is just one God. And often I wonder about the many gods we are so willing to live with. There is the God we only know when we are looking for miracles. There is the God we only look for who can bless us. And that's all that God can do. There is the God who calls us to war. There are all these other gods we are, we are living with. But there is only one God. The others are not God at all. For there is only one God. But somehow we choose to live with these other gods, thinking that they are indeed God. But they are not. Perhaps you too can think of some of the gods that people choose to live with in this world. They are not God at all, for there is just one God. So that's what we need to say to one another. And when we say this about God, that God is just one, then we need to also say to one another that we, need, we, we must listen if we want to know who this God is what Jesus says about who God is. For this is how we know what God is about, or who God is about. is what Jesus tells us about God, or shows us, or reveals to us about who God is. And this is what Jesus says about this God. This God demands our all. We must give to this God who is one, our everything. Our everything. We cannot only make sacrifices from time to time and in between think there's nothing we need to do. There's nothing we can't do. Not at all. We must, everything we have, we must put at God's disposal everything we have, everything that we are. This is what God wants of us. Ordinary people like Ruth and Naomi who helped God to achieve extraordinary things. We, friends, are Jesus' companions. Jesus' God is our God. There is no God for us outside of who Jesus shows us who God is. Jesus' home is our home. We feel not at home in any other place. Jesus' people are our people. 
Friends, we can do this. We can be breach builders. This world is in need of people who can build breaches. So when we think about the election tomorrow, the questions we must ask are questions about people building breaches. Who are the people who are building breaches? Who are the people who are building breaches which can withstand the storms of living in South Africa today? Who are the people for whom some breaches are just too far to build or too much to build? Who are the breach builders between people between people and institutions? So these are some questions which may guide us as we reflect on how to vote tomorrow. As bridge builders, we can help God achieve God's purposes for this beautiful country, this beautiful land of ours. Ordinary people like you and me, we are the ones who can build breach breaches. And how do we do that? As ordinary people helping God to achieve extraordinary things? Simple. By creating listening communities. And we start with our own families. Before we judge, we listen. Listen. For when people speak, God speaks. <laughs> Often we don't hear God speaking because we don't listen to what people are really saying. And when we do speak to one another, after we've listened, we say to one another, there is just one God. We have a tendency to, to want to live in a world in which there are many gods. But there is just one God. And when we speak about that one God, as we listen to one another, we speak to each other about this one God, and we ask, who is this God who wants to achieve God's purposes through the lives of ordinary people like you and me? Then we look at Jesus and we, says, we say, ah, there God is. That's who God is. That's what God is about. And when you think about Jesus' life, is he not the ultimate bridge builder? <laughs> is that not who Jesus is? Between God and people, between people and and that's who God has called us to be, especially during times of election and, uh, and when we are facing challenges uh, in our land and so on, and in our local communities. Bridge builders, people, normal, ordinary people like you and I, let us choose tomorrow to build, to be bridge builders. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, today we want to thank you for the privilege that we have to, to cast our vote tomorrow, to choose our leaders. We pray that through your Spirit you will guide us so that we may choose wisely so that we may choose those who will be bridge builders, for that is what we need as a country. As a people here in this part of the world. And so we pray that 
that you will help us, Lord, so that we may choose the leaders that will take us forward, so that we may build breaches in this land that are strong and will withstand the storms of, of life, of living in this beautiful land of ours. We thank you that you use ordinary people like us to achieve your purposes. Here we are today saying, Lord, that we know that we must give everything to you. Help us to do so, so that as your people, we may indeed be the bridge builders in this land. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.